today with a special guest, Patty Jennings of the New Jersey Woodturners. And what we're going to do today is do the finishing on this Kim Winkle stool. So I met Kim a couple years ago and I saw her make one of these and I've made a couple since. This one's made out of Spectre Ply and this one I did with just black paint and with some veneering because I was practicing my veneering skills last year. But today is special because we're going to do something more along the line of what Kim does and we're going to do this with milk paint. So hang in there and we're going to show you how to do it right now. Hi, um, today we're going to do a milk paint stool and we're going to use these um, milk paints from the milk paint company. Um, and they're a powdered paint that we mix with water and you apply it, let it dry, and then you can sand it back and buff it. And it makes a really nice sturdy finish on the wood. Um, they're basically a natural product. What colors are we gonna be using? We're using a yellow and a green. So we're gonna do a green on the base okay. as a base coat. And we'll do three coats of that. And then we'll do a yellow on top of that. And then we'll sand back the layers so that you'll see the green showing through underneath the yellow. And it's, it's a very interesting effect when it's done. So this is the, this is the product here, and it's uh, just a powder paint. It's really ch like a charcoal cons uh, consistency. Kind of chalky, yeah. Chalky, that's a better yeah. word, yeah. Yeah, okay. chalky consistency. Yep, yeah, okay. And um, we just put in, I put in the paint first to make sure we have enough. And keep it in this. Keep it in airtight because the air will activate it and then you're, it won't be any good. And then we'll just add the water. And you want to, like a, yeah, what consistency are you going with? You, Similar you to? You want like a, like a um, consistency of like cream, like a heavy cream. And it does thicken up as it sits. So you have to keep that in mind. Say that again? It thickens up as it sits. Oh, it's thicker, okay, yeah. okay. And we just have to make sure we get it really good and mixed. I'm just trying to get all the lumps out of there. Try right? to get all the lumps out. And just mash them down. And it starts to bubble as it activates, as the ingredients activate with the water. You can see it's kind of a... So this takes a couple minutes to get the consistency that you're looking yeah, for? Yeah, it takes it takes a few minutes for it to actually thicken up and get the right consistency. And if it does get too thick, you can always add a little more water and thin it down a little, which is fine. Kind of that consistency. Do the, do the green. So there's the green. Oops. Oh, I didn't seal that one good enough. No. <laughs> so this milk paint's about four years old at this mm -hmm. point. It does last. You know, well. well, it wasn't an airtight container. I put mine into little jars that you can seal. Oh, okay. Good I put idea. them into little like mason jars and seal them up good. Water in this one. Okay, so it's five minutes later. We've been stirring this and we're getting all the bubbles out and this is the consistency that you're looking for and when you get the reaction you'll see the little bubbles in there that right. means it's reacting to the water right and that's what you're looking for okay um that reaction that so do we still have to stir the the yellow no it's fine it's, that's fine as is yeah it's fine okay 
Mm -hmm. So from here we start up to now prepare we just the prepare the prepare the stool on the lathe. Mm -hmm. To get it. So we're just going to take this apart. Go ahead. Okay. We're going to take this apart. So the next step is you want to cover the bed of the lathe. I'm going to put a couple of rags down. And we're going to, I've already sanded this, so now we're going to go ahead and start applying the paint. So we're basically going to put on three coats, and we have to let it dry between coats. So we're going to turn the lathe on. Let's turn the lock, to take the lock off. <laughs> turn it on, and we don't need it to go really fast for this process, so we're going to slow it way down. Do we need a smock? Mm. It didn't really get on me okay. the last time I did it, so I think we're fine. So we're just gonna smear this on. This brush is getting on my hair. You wanna go in reverse. A little easier to do it in reverse. Okay. So we're going for one thick coat or one thin coat? One or? thick coat. One thick coat, yeah. okay. And there's usually X amount of minutes between drying? Yeah, dry? it takes a few minutes. We can we can speed up the drying time with a blow dryer. Um, but if you just want it to dry naturally, it does take a few minutes. Either way is fine. And you said we're gonna do three coats of green? Three coats of green. Mm. And we'll do one coat of yellow. And we're not gonna do the top there, the tenon, because we want the glue to- Right, we're gonna want the glue to adhere, so we're right. not gonna do the tenon. So we could let it dry naturally. We could. Which will take 10 minutes or so, but we can speed up the process By with the uh, hair dryer. Hair dryer. Okay. And you can tell it's dry when it starts looking chalky, like right here. All right. That's how you know it's, okay. that it's dry. So we're gonna put three coats on so it's it's nice and thick there, because right now it's not really cover, cover, covering up the poplar. Correct. Right. So that's why we're gonna put the three coats on. When you're done, you won't see the wood at all. It's a, it's a little thick right here, so if you get it on too thick, you get cracking, which can also make a cool effect. Mm -hmm. So it's not necessarily a bad thing, but if that's not what you're going for, then you want to do three fairly thin coats. Okay. There's coat number two. So the exact same process. Overall, we're, do, we're gonna do each leg in probably less than 10 minutes. Right, so it's it's really a simple process. It's a uh, additive process. You do the first coat, set coat, third coat, dry in between. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then we're gonna go on with the yellow. Again, with three coats? No, that? just one coat just of one yellow. Just one coat of the top coat? The okay. top coat yellow will just be one coat. Okay, so we just want a real thick, base coat we, at, yeah, the, we want at the, the beginning. We want the base to be fairly thick. Okay. And then a lot of the yellow will be sanded back, showing mm -hmm. the green underneath. Okay. So that's why we don't need to put three coats of the yellow. Okay. All right. We're gonna spare the viewers the proverbial paint drying portion of this. Okay, final coat. Okay, so we've just uh, dried that. Again, this is really taking about 10 minutes. 15 minute see, tops. You can see how chalky it is here now. That's yep. how you know it's dry. It's not shiny anymore. Yep. And we can put the uh, yellow right on top of that. And this is a lighter coat, right? Yeah, this will be a lighter coat. You don't, you don't even have to worry if it covers completely because we're going to be sanding back a lot of it. So right. it doesn't even need to be a complete coverage. Mostly it's going to be staying in the grooves. And what um, grit sandpaper are we going to use? Um, we can do like two, 120, 
we could go a little heavier if we want to get more off. It really depends on how much you want to take off. Okay. Okay, we'll be back to you when we have this dry. Okay, same process. Let's dry it. Take two or three minutes to dry it, and then we just start sanding. Okay. See the crackle in there? That's because it's a little thicker, mm -hmm. but that will give you like a crackle finish when, when you're when you're done with it. Mm -hmm. get, you'll see that little bit of a crackle finish in it, okay. which can be cool if that, you know, unless that's not what you're going for, then. <laughs> okay. So it's ready to sand now? It's ready to sand. Okay, so you can pick the sandpaper you want. We're starting with a 100 grit sandpaper. This is the fun part. And you, I'm just going to leave it in reverse and just on top, just. Oh, so it's light sand. Yeah, you don't have to sand really heavily. Should you be using a respirator? You really should have a mask or a respirator on. You really right. shouldn't be breathing this in because it is um, like a rocky base, mm -hmm. chalky base. Okay. So you really shouldn't be breathing this stuff in. Okay, let's do that. So. so now we're just doing a little bit of spot sanding. <clears throat> and you do this to whatever floats your boat, whatever you think looks good, then you're done. Yeah, if you see a spot that's a little heavier than you like. And if you feel like you screwed up one part, you can always go back and add some more green and put more dry paint it and, and put more paint it, on and redo and it. Redo it, it again, yeah, yeah, if you don't like it. Absolutely, it's very forgiving what you're doing okay now what we want to do now that it's all dry and it's sanded back to our satisfaction we're going to take a steel wall a fine steel wall that's four out okay and then we're going to we're going to buff it out so what i'm going to do is i'm going to turn up the speed a little bit and go to like 600 and just hold the steel wool on and it'll get a little warm but this actually will sure. Um, make makes it firmer and gives it a sheen. It, like yeah. like it's putting a high gloss on. High, it. Yeah, high gloss in so it, it's, and it. It's going from flat to shiny. And I'm going to turn on the vacuum again because we're kicking up a lot of this stuff. Let's see, I'll turn it off so you can see the difference. Need to add wax to the top of this for protection. Okay. 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 So any paste wax will do. I happen to have Johnson's here. Okay. I'm just going to use a paper towel. Take some of this wax and just rub it on. So this helps a little bit more shine and adds layer of protection also. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, and then I'm going to turn up the speed right on the lathe. And it's still going to be in reverse because then I can hold a paper towel above. Okay, we're going to burnish and polish it in. So yeah, there, you can, there you can see it's gotten even shinier, which you would expect with wax. And this is the... Uh, you can feel the heat. When you feel the heat, then you know you're doing it. Okay. <laughs> and then it melts the wax in and gives it a really nice 
shine. So really, this is a pretty simple process. It's a few, four coats of paint, a little bit of wax, maybe 20 minutes for each leg. So this, this is a project on the finishing part that we're probably going to get this done within an hour and a half or two hours. And the turning of the stool took about an hour and a half. So in an afternoon, you can really make this entire project. It's a pretty quick, uh, quick project to make. It's pretty much that. Gets it a little more glossy shine. Fantastic. Okay, guys, we're going to be back to you once we get the other two legs done. Okay, so here's what all three look like, and now we're going to start on the seat. And notice the high gloss that the sandpaper, the steel wool, and the wax uh, leaves. So now we have the seat on. We've done a little bit of final sanding, and what we're doing here is we put on a bottle stopper, stopper mandrel in order to turn this. Let's get going. Okay. Now I'm doing this in forward so that the mandrel doesn't come off the lathe. Don't ask her how she knows that. <laughs> but for this, it won't matter if it's forward. It's a little different than doing the legs. Again, we're going to do the same three coats. The worst part about doing it in forward is you get splattered. <laughs> Don't ask me how I know that. Yeah. Going to ruin your new Bob's Woodshop t shirt now. Yeah. I have to give you an apron. <laughs> okay, so put a Patty and some SPE that's a short protective equipment so she didn't get any more splatters on it. Now we're ready for the top coat of yellow on the seat. So we're gonna press this on. And we'll see how this looks. So now we're all dry and we're gonna start sanding. A lot of dust, so we had the, the dust collector going on, the mass for the PPE, and we have the overhead going. Stuff is nasty, do not breathe this. Okay, so we're about to apply the wax. This is super smooth, as you can imagine, with 4 out steel wool. So it's kind of shiny now, and we're going to go ahead and put the wax on it now. Okay. 
Okay, since I drilled the holes in the bottom of the seat at 15 degrees, I've set the miter box at 15 degrees, and I've set a stop block over here, and I'm gonna hold that. There's a little bit of rocking to this, so I'm gonna hold this as strongly as I can so that the saw does not make this wobble when I'm cutting it. Ready? did not impact or hurt the uh, paint on that. So perfect. And we'll do that two more times. Let's make a little button. Go ahead. So what we're gonna do now is make a little button for the bottom to fill up that hole uh, that's at the bottom of the seat. So the little knurling tool helped put this little pattern on there and then we're going to go ahead finish this off and paint this. paint and then we'll be able to use that on the bottom. Okay, so it's ready for the glue up and in order to do that I made sure I dry fit each one of these and I'm going to put a little bit of glue in each hole and I'm going to use a solder brush to spread that glue around inside the hole. If these joints are a little bit loose, you could use epoxy. Uh, I think in this case, they're tight enough that I could use just the glue. And again, these little solder brushes are perfect for this type of application. And again, what I did with these, uh, the holes in here I did that at a at a 15 degree angle so obviously that's what I had to cut the the angle on the miter box over there and it's a three-legged stool versus a four-legged stool so you don't have to worry about it uh, tipping one way or another all right then you get a nice flat surface like this and make sure the legs are sitting flat See Patty right here? These legs are sitting just right. And then all you gotta do is put a little bit of weight on it and wait till the next day. That's good. Well, that's the project. After this, I put some weight on the stool. I'm gonna finish it tomorrow. And that's it. I hope you liked the project. Special thanks to Patty Jennings for coming over today to put the finish on this. The stool was made by Kimberly Winkle of Tennessee, and she uh, gave us a demonstration at the New Jersey Woodturners two weeks ago. So I hope you liked the project. Hey, and you guys know to drill. If you like my content, please like, comment, and subscribe. So until next time, I'll see you on another episode of Bob's Woodshop. Bye-bye.